So, we've already talked about how to simplify some fractions. Today we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide fractions. And what we're going to realize is that if you know how to multiply fractions, division is just a little extra step beyond that. So let's go ahead and start section 4.3. Now we're going to talk about how to multiply and divide some fractions. Let's talk first on how to multiply some fractions. When we're multiplying fractions, we're going to start with kind of a just a, a nice example to, to illustrate why multiplying fractions is the way it is. For instance, one half times three fourths. Now, some of you might know the answer to this problem if you've ever had multiplication fractions before. You can do this; it's pretty quick. But I, I want you to know why we do what we do with multiplying fractions. What we're going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of three fourths, and then we're going to think about what half times three fourths actually means. So let's draw a picture first of three fourths. If I'm drawing three fourths, how many partitions do I need in my? Four. What? How many? Good, because it says the denominator is 4, that means I'm cutting this into 4 segments. And how many do I shade if I'm talking about 3 fourths? Three. Three. Would you all agree that this is 3 fourths? Yes. yes. What we're doing, we're going to multiply this by 1 half. What that means is we are going to take half of this fraction. So check out how we can do this visually. If I'm talking about half times 3 fourths, I'm going to take half of this whole thing. So basically, I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm only going to keep half of my shaded sections. Into how many partitions did Cutting this in half, make it. Is it still only four partitions? No. How many is it? Eight. So when we, when we look at this fraction, we know we have a denominator of eight. How many parts are shaded in now? Three. Only three of them. We took half of our shaded sections. So when we multiply one half times three fourths, or we take one half of the three fourths, we're ending with three eighths. This is why when you look at this thing, what's happening is we're multiplying the numerator times the numerator, that's giving us the 3. The denominator times the denominator, that's giving us the 8. What this does is this cuts this fraction in half again. If we had another number up here, we'd be multiplying that by the 3. So we multiply with, with fractions, the numerator times the numerator, and the denominator times the denominator. Have you ever seen something like that before with your fractions? Yeah. Good. If you have, great. If not, well, we need, this is an introduction for you. So when we multiply fractions, we simply do the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator, or multiply numerators and multiply the denominators. Some people say we multiply straight across. That's fine to think of it that way. Go straight across our fractions. So this equals 3 eighths. And what we do is we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Multiply the numerators. And multiply the denominators. We go straight across. In general, here's what we do. If we have any two fractions that we're multiplying together, such as, let's say, A over B times C over D, what multiplying fractions says is that we're going to multiply the A times C, whatever those numbers happen to be, 
over the b times d. We literally just go straight across the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. Raise your hand if you feel okay with this so far. Let's try some examples and see how we do this stuff. Let's do 2 thirds times 5 sevenths. 2 thirds times 5 sevenths, what's the first thing that we're going to do? What do we need to multiply? 2 times what? 5. five. And 3 times? Seven. So straight across, here's what we're going to do. I want you to write this step, by the way. I want you to write this out as 2 times 5 over 3 times 7 first. And I'll show you why in about 5 minutes, why we do that step. Uh, I can also reinforce this later on when we go through our, our other concepts because there's certain things we're going to be able to simplify and certain things we're not. If we write this step, it's going to help us to simplify. So write that step out for you before you do the next one. I know you're probably thinking, well, why can't we just multiply straight across? We will. We are. But this is going to help us simplify as we go. So 2 times 5 gives us how much? 10. Over 1. Hey, by the way, since we did simplification, can you simplify that? We look for common factors, but there's nothing that divides both 10 and 21, so you're done. That's as far as you can go on that. How about 1 third times 1 ninth? What are the things we're multiplying here? 1. 1 times? One. So I'm going to write that 1 times 1 over what now? 3 times 9. Times nine. So we do our numerator times our numerator, denominator times our denominator. Then we do that multiplication, and we're going to get what? One. Perfect. Exactly right. Do you feel okay with our multiplication fraction so far? Yeah. So far. Good. Let's ramp it up a little bit. So let's do 6 sevenths times 14 over 27. Now, of course, the first thing that I want to see from you, I want to see this from you. That's the first thing I want to see. I want to see you make that one fraction. Please be doing that. We're learning this stuff in this class. Trust me on this one. Show me that. This is going to help you out not only in this class, but Math A and Math C as well. If you're multiplying fractions, write them as one fraction first. Can you agree to do that for me, please? At least in here, do that. <clears throat> now, you have a few options on how to accomplish the rest of this problem. Option number one is you do what we did over here, just multiply those numbers. If you multiply those numbers, so option one, we do 6 times 14, we do 7 times 27. What's 6 times 14? Anybody know? 84, okay. Over 7 times 27, did you get that? 100. Sit, I can't hear you. 189. You could get 84 over 189. However, can you simplify 84 over 189? There we go, yeah? No. Yes, absolutely you can. That, that can be simplified. You certainly can do it. However, that's a pretty big fraction, right? So you might have to use your, your prime factorization to do that. That might take you some extra time. There are two other options you have to simplify this as you go. This is the reason that we write our fractions like this before we start actually multiplying them. Here's why. Option two is, instead of actually multiplying the 6 times 14 and the 7 times the 27, instead of doing that, Option two is you can break this up as you're going. So instead of 6 times 2, I'll think of that as a prime factorization of 2 times 3. Is that still 6? Yeah. yeah. Times, instead of 14, I'll think of 2 times 7. Does that still represent 6 times 14 to you? Yes. You still with me on that? So that's 6, that's still 14, it's still being multiplied together. Now, the 7 times 27, I can think of this as 7 times 27, if you break that up, is 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 times 9. Now, I'm going to stick with the prime factorization because that's what I've shown you. Do you agree that this is still 7 times 27? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you see any factors that are the same on the numerator and denominator? 7. 7 and 3 are 
Seven. Seven's the same. What else? Three. 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 Can we cross those out? Yes. Yeah, we noticed this. And this is why I have you write this as one fraction. I hope you're paying attention right here. The reason why you write this as one fraction is because you really cannot cross things out until you have one fraction where you have the same factors on the numerator denominator. A lot of people are under the assumption that you're supposed to cross out right here and right here. That's not actually true, right? The only reason why that works is because I could have written it like this and then simplified. What I want you to do is write that as one fraction before we simplify because what this does is change the multiplication problem into a simplification problem that you have just finished doing in section 4.2. If we can write this as one fraction, break it up into our factors, then we can simplify stuff out. So when we look at this problem, we look for any common factors that we have. Of course, I'm seeing the threes. One of the threes is gone, and you all said the sevens. The sevens are gone. And then I can write this as the product of the numerators, the product of the denominators, what do we have in the numerator here? Four. Four, nine. Four. Yeah, I'll bet you a million dollars that if you reduce this one properly, you're going to get four ninths. Which way is easier to do? What if you just cross cancel? I'm giving oh, you a third yeah. option. Hang on. Oh. You can't cross cancel. Oh, I thought that was not, not the yet. options you were going to give us. Well, you just have to wait. <laughs> Jeez. You're one step ahead of me. But just one. Okay. So we, d we could do this way. However, it's kind of hard to simplify. We don't want to do that. Well, you have to leave. <laughs> she had a phone call. That's, that's all. <laughs> okay, we could do this way, but then you'd have to simplify. That takes a long time. That would take a long time. This way, a little bit quicker, right? We break it up, no problem. We cross out factors. This is a good option for you. If you like this option, stick with it. There is one more option I'm going to show you. Option number three. I'm going to rewrite this because I want everyone to do this no matter what. No matter what. Uh, are you supposed to simplify here? No. No, no, no. I want to see this first. Nod your head if you, you understand that. I want to see that. So we're going to do 6 times 14, 7 times 27. But here's the last option that you have. We are not going to do something called cross cancellation in this class. We're going to do something called just simplification. When you write something like this as a product of a numerator and product of denominators on one fraction, we can just simplify like you normally did in your last section. So I do want to see this step. However, we have an even shorter way to do this than this. An even shorter way, and here's what it is. You look for common factors on the numerator and denominator. Those are just numbers that divide something on the top and something on the bottom. For instance, let me give you an example here. If I look at the 7 and the 14, those numbers have something that divides both of them. What number divides both 7 and 14? So what we do, if you remember this from the very first part of section 4.2, I said you can multiply or you can divide a fraction on both the numerator and denominator by the same number, and it's still equal. It's still the same value. So what we're doing is we're dividing this piece by piece. You, you with me on this? We're dividing this piece by piece. So I'm looking at this and go, okay, let's divide both 7 and 14 by the same number. What number would that be in this seven. case? Seven. Let's divide by 7. What's 7 divided by 7? One. 1. We cross out, we put a 1. You have to continue with the same number, though. What's 14 divided by Two. 7? 2. 2. Okay. Now we're going to look for anything else. I see a 6 and a 27. Do those share a common factor, or do those share something that divides them? 3. Three. So 3 divides both 6 and 27. We're going to do that piece by piece. How many times does 3 divide 6? Two. 2. Stick with the same number. How many times does 3 divide 27? 9. Check for anything 